Okay, welcome back to the Pawn tutorial series. This is video number three on how to do the basic Pawn game, uh, being a player one game, a single player game where it's against the computer. And again, in the first parts, we looked at how to set up the paddles, how to set up the sprites for the ball, the variables we looked at in part two of how to keep track of the score. And we left off kind of with this code that was taking a look for um, as long as the player one or the computer score is less than six, then it's gonna do whatever's inside this. And uh, just to start out in this tutorial, I wanna talk a little bit about nested if statements. You would have seen these in code.org as well. They're a very important concept in computer science. But what a nested if statement means is this if statement, if touching color red, it's only gonna look at this in your program if this is already a condition. So for example, if the player one score gets to six, it's no longer going to even look at this because this is dependent on this because it's inside, okay? Now, otherwise, it's always doing these things. It's always moving 10 steps. It's always bouncing um, because this right now is a forever statement, which means it's gonna go on for the entire duration of your program as soon as the green flag is clicked. Okay, so right now where we left off, we had um, if touching color red, then we gave the computer a point and we reset it back to the middle. Again, just to show you what that looked like. Right now, player one cannot score points, but the computer can. So we have an evil game where the user has no chance of winning and we will frustrate our users very quickly if this is our final product. So let's give player one a chance to beat the computer here. And we're gonna do that by creating another if statement. So here we go. If is gonna go right underneath this if statement that's already here. Okay, so the placement becomes really important. It needs to be inside of this one, which we can see it is. And it needs to be outside of this one. If I accidentally put this in here, then it's not gonna make sense to create a condition of touching green because it will already have to be touching red to even look at this condition. If that was confusing, that's okay. As long as you understand the basics, the logic behind it, um, where you can now create our condition. So what is it here? We want an if sensing, okay? If it's touching color, and let's get the exact color. So click on it, click on the color, and then you have that color in the box. So if it's touching that, you might see here, um, it's gonna be a very similar type of code. So we need to go data, we need to go change uh, what happens here, the green. It means that the player one scored a point, right? So change player one score by one, that means it will increase it by one, which by the way, if you said change by negative one, it would go down by one as well. So you can do things that way too. Um, and now we need it to motion. We need it to go back to the center of X0, Y0. We need to give some kind of message. For example, press space to continue. Two seconds is enough for that. And wait until, so a control event. We need the wait until. And we need um, sensing now for the user to press something. And again, the space key is pressed. Now, question time for you guys. There is a logic problem in this code, and I purposely threw in an error uh, in the second part of the tutorial because I want you to get used to making mistakes and learning how to fix them. And there is something wrong with this concept of keeping track of points because basically I want this to happen until somebody um, scores their five points and I want it to kick out of that. So let's just take a look at what actually happens here if I run this. We have both at zero. We're pressing space to continue and right now uh, it is scoring points properly but you're going to see very quickly that it's not stopping at five points like I originally intended it to and maybe some of you caught that error. Congratulations if you did but take a look now. We're at six points we're at seven, we're going forever, and it all comes back to this arrangement, which might have looked kind of complex at the time, because it is. Uh, 
if player one score is less than six, is player one score less than six? No, it's not. It's seven. What about the computer score, though? Is that less than six? Uh-oh. It is less than six. So the only way this is actually going to stop doing this is it's going to stop doing it if both are six or more, which just isn't the case and isn't what I want this game to actually do. So I want you to show you how you go about fixing stuff like this. And I'm just going to like pull these pieces out. Um, I still like the basic setup, but this little tiny operator here is what's creating the problem in my program so far. So we're going to trash it just by pulling it off the screen. And what I'm really trying to say here is, if they're both less than six, then keep doing this, right? But if somebody gets to six, then stop and move on to the next thing or do something else. So simply, if I would have used this operator instead and put these inside, it's now saying both these things have to be true. They both have to be less than six for this to still be the rules of the game. So let's go ahead and run that again, and we'll see if that uh, made any difference to our program. Okay. So something happened here once one of the players got to six. And you might notice uh, right now it's no longer giving any points because this actually happened. This condition, one of these people got greater than five. And so what it's doing now is it's no longer looking for point scores. Okay, so now I can actually see that my program is making sense and uh, that this condition is being watched for. Okay, so now that we have this area fixed, we need to have a little bit more fun with this game, because this is not a fun game right now, because the paddles do absolutely nothing. So let's change that. Uh, we can do this a few ways. You can ba base this on if it's touching the color black, or you can base it on if it's touching one of the two sprites that we made. I'll show you the way with sprites, although the other way might actually be easier, and if you want to try that, you can. Um, so we need another if statement. Uh, so we're going to put that in. We need to make sure it's not attached to one of these other if statements. It's got to be right around there, I believe. Let's take a look. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's not dependent on this one, and it's not dependent on this one. We don't care if it's touching red or green. We care, though, that it's still within the parameters of somebody being less than six. So this is our third nested if statement. So we're getting pretty complex with this game already. Uh, our operators, we're going to take a look at a couple things for this. We're going to go ahead and say, um, if it's doing one of two things here. So here we can use the or command. If it is touching. So, and, and this is where it gets kind of confusing to students, but here we have to say, if what's touching, okay? Well, it's if the ball's touching, because this is the script for the ball. So if the ball is touching the player one paddle, or if the ball is touching the computer panel, all we have to do now is ask the ball to change directions. So that's actually fairly easy to do. We're going to ask it to um, move a certain amount, or turn, let's say. So we're going to ask it to turn, and we're going to ask it to turn by, let's just try something. A lot of this is trial and error. We're going to ask it to turn by 90 degrees. Now, I'm not sure how my ball got so small up there, so we're going to go back and uh, I think resize that back to 45%. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and run this now. Oh, look at that. This is behaving very nicely. You can still score points, clearly. Aha. Now, this sort of glitch will happen from time to time. And this is when you might have to get into changing the size factor of the ball. So we could try 40% to see if that gives us a better bounce. But there are definitely different sizes to this ball and different glitches that will happen because it isn't perfectly circular. 
and because of that um, it is possible that it's going to glitch so don't worry too much about the glitches um, it is scratch so it, it's going to cause some problems from time to time but we do our best to solve them right okay so that is uh, an improvement for sure let's go to file save as and again if you're having good save habits at this point then you're saving these all as different versions so you have multiple copies to go back to so again home drive we're going to go back to our grade 7 ict and you could call this pawn uh, player option version 3 give it a whole different file name and that way we have multiple save files okay so looking good so far now just to finish off the basic version of the pawn and that's where i'm going to leave this tutorial is we want to basically just end the game if somebody does get to five points right okay so we're going to have a couple more conditions here uh, a couple more if statements believe it or not now the question is where do you put these if statements we want it to i'm going to ask this program to always look forever to see if the player gets to five either the player gets to five or the computer gets to five uh, so I'm actually not going to put it in with these other. I'm going to put it just outside, but still within the forever block. Okay. So we need an if statement. And we need a couple of them, actually. And we need our operators. And we're going to always check for two things. We're going to check to see if the player one score is equal to five. And we're going to check as well to see if the computer score is equal to five. If it is, something needs to happen. So let's go back to looks. Let's say something. And let's say player one wins round one. Okay. Now, you might remember that I made a variable way back at the start of this that said first round. Now, first round at the time was to keep track of whether or not we are still in the first round of this game or not. Okay. So at this point, um, we haven't really set first round to anything. We haven't assigned it a value. So I'm going to go up to the start of our program here where we assign the other variables values. And I'm going to say set first round to... And instead of making it a number, you can make it a statement too. So this may be the first time you're seeing a Boolean variable. A Boolean variable is just something that has a value of either true or false. So my question for you is, at the start of this program, is it the first round? Well, yeah, at the start of it, it is. So we're going to set this at the start to true. Now, my next question for you, if player one has five points, which is the goal of the first round, then is it, do we want it to still be the first round? No, we want to change the variable first round to something else. So let's do that. I'm going to set first round to false. Oops, <laughs> Flash. false, there we go. Okay, so now that variable has a new value, the computer is not doing anything yet based on that but at least that's a way for us to keep track of whether or not somebody scored five points and that's the entire goal right now all right now i'm also going to do something here that allows me to tell the computer that somebody's won this game and i'm gonna to get into this you have to go to events and you're going to get into something really important in Scratch. How do you send a message to the computer that something's happened? Well, you broadcast a message. Okay, so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add a broadcast. And I'm going to make this um, a new value. And I'm going to make the message be player one wins. So basically, this is a way of me keep telling the computer that something's happened, something very specific. The first player in the first round got five points, and they won that round. That's going to allow me to now set up a different set of conditions if the computer ever receives that message. 
Okay, so you'll understand more about that when you see where I'm going in the next tutorial. To finish off this tutorial, though, as we're getting to the 15-minute mark again, uh, we need a very similar type of thing if the computer wins. Okay, so again, we're going to go to looks. We're going to say something. Maybe we'll say something like computer wins. It's up to you what you want it to say, by the way. Uh, better luck next time, human. All right, the computer's taunting you. And again, maybe we want these to go a little bit longer. So let's change these to five seconds instead of two. And I'm going to uh, also tell the computer that the first round is over. So let's go to our set first round two. Again, it's no longer the first round if anybody wins that. I don't know, I always want to type plus, but apparently I do. Uh, so false. Okay. So let's just take a look at if we have that basic element working now. I will try to beat the computer. And if I can't, then I might want to have my reflexes checked because it's not a super hard pong game at this moment. There we go. I got a point there for doing nothing. I like this. All right. You can see it's a little bit glitchy. Um, sometimes it is sort of hitting the panel, but still giving them a point. Don't worry about that. You can adjust the size of the ball. And if the ball is at the perfect size, then you'll have fewer glitches like that. So maybe we'll experiment a bit with that in the next tutorial as well. But right now, uh, things are going well. Oh, computer got me on that one. Talking too much. I'm going to blame that on the glitch. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, yay, I win. I beat the computer. Woohoo! <laughs> and uh, at this point, we're going to ask it to... There we go. There's our message. It's taken a little while to appear but the computer is congratulating me on winning round one. And nothing else is happening. We will actually stop the tutorial there uh, for now, because in the next tutorial, we're going to get it really advanced, and we're going to figure out how to make it so this game of Pong can get harder if the user wins round one. So get ready for that. If you've made it this far, you're amazing. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you in the last tutorial.